welcome to the Senate, and thank you for uh, accepting this uh, the invitation of this committee and sharing your valuable time with us. This uh, hybrid joint public hearing of the Committee of National Defense and Security, Peace, Unification, and Reconciliation with the Committees on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs and Finance is now called to order. To allow me first to acknowledge the presence uh, of uh, one of our uh, indefatigable colleague, Senator De La Rosa. And with the presence of uh, Senator De La Rosa, we now declare the presence of a quorum. Are there other senators who are virtually present? Well, I'm also here, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Senator oh, Bo Senator Bongreville is also with us uh, online. Well, this is the second meeting of the uh, Committee on National Defense. Today, we have three major clusters of measures in the agenda. First is a bill from uh, Senator De La Rosa, our chairperson of the Committee on uh, Public Order, creating the National Council to End Local Communist Armed, Armed Conflict, or ELCAC. Act. After that, we shall proceed with the bills rationalizing disability pension and increase and increasing the monthly pension of war veterans, filed by this representation, our hardworking chairperson of the Committee on Finance, Senator Angara, and our vice chairperson, Senator Revilla Jr. The last item in our agenda are measures pro providing free legal assistance to officers and personnel of the armed forces of, of the Philippines and the Philippine National Police filed by our Vice Chairperson, Senator Bongo, Senator De La Rosa, and this representation. The, the discussions will follow the order as they were mentioned. We will be happy to receive your precious inputs and comments on these measures so that we, we refine the legislation sponsored the same to the plenary. Before we proceed, let us, uh, do you have any opening statement, Senator De La Rosa? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's your turn. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, and uh, my esteemed colleagues, and our resource speakers. And dito ngayon, magandang hapon po. Uh, I would like to thank the chairperson, Senator Jingo Estrada, for setting this committee hearing and including in the agenda two of my priority legislations, Senate Bill 200, or the ELCAC Act, and an equally important measure, Senate Bill 896 or the free legal assistance to any officer or enlisted personnel of the AFP and PNP. Mr. Chair, as a former military and police officer, ako ay naging saksi sa hirap na naranasan na ating mga kababayan dulot ng insurhensya sa ating bansa. Hindi lamang po ang ating mga militar at kapulisan ang naapiktuhan ng mga naging paglaban natin sa mga communist terrorist, ang ating mga inusinting mamamayan sa kamundukan ang siyang naging biktima ng mga idolohiyang walang, kabul walang kabuluhan na ang nais lamang ay ang mapabagsak ang gobyerno. Tumagal ng ilang dekada, maraming ari-arian ang nasira at higit sa nakakalungkot sa lahat, maraming buhay ang nasawi upang sugpuin ang tila kanser sa ating soberania. Subiranya. The anti-insurgency drive of the government was taken to a whole new level when President Duterte issued Executive Order No. 70. It established the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict and implemented the whole of nation approach. The government's delivery of basic services in the countryside through the effective coordination of the member agencies of the ntf -LCAC has strengthened our communist infested, our, our internal socio-political stability. Areas formerly known to be communist infested are now thriving and enjoying their peaceful communities. With the accomplishment of the NTF ELCAC, many problems in the geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas, or GIDA, were resolved which greatly helped in neutralizing the CPP-NPA. With this, Mr. Chair, to continue the achievements of ntf -ILCAC and to finally achieve our goal of eradicating communist terrorists in the country, my proposed measure seeks to institutionalize 
the whole of nation approach. Meanwhile, the proposed measure on AFP and PNP Free Legal Assistance Act aims to ensure, aims to assure our military and law enforcement agents that they will always have the government support in the performance of their duties. With the proposed bill, no AFP and PNP personnel will be left on their own to defend themselves in legal battles after they have defended us against lawless elements. With these measures, I am certain that the protection and security of our nation will be maintained, while those who have sworn to provide that protection and security will be safeguarded. Thank you and good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator De La Rosa. Senator Revilla, do you have any opening statement? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, to our Honorable Chairman, Senator Jingo Estrada, uh, distinguished uh, colleagues and our resource persons and guests. Magandang uh, hapon po sa, sa inyong lahat. Nais ko pong uh, pasalamatan ang ating uh, Chairman sa pagbibigay daan upang maisama nga sa ating agenda ngayong araw ang hinain kong panukalang batas. Senate Bill Number 700, 700 uh, this seeks to grant an increase in the monthly pension received by war veterans and their dependents. No less than the Constitution mandates utmost deference for our war heroes whose bravery uh, uh, provided protection to our nation. As the supreme law of the land reads, uh, the state shall provide immediate and adequate care, benefits, and other forms of assistance to our veterans and veterans of military campaigns, uh, their surviving spouses and orphans. Uh, ito ang sukli lamang ng bayan sa tapang at uh, giting nila sa gitna ng gera. For having uh, witnessed the terrors of wars and enduring them in order to hold the line our war veterans deserve nothing less. Um, noong 2016, noong 2016, uh, ipinasa ng Kongreso ang batas na nagtatakdang itaas ang uh, old age pension ng ating World War II, Korean War and Vietnam War veterans. Uh, mula limang libo hanggang dalawampung libo. Sa pamamagitan naman ng Senate Bill Number no. 700, ang panukalang dagdag na tatlong libo ay magsisilbing uh, inflationary adjustment sa nagtataas ang presyo ng mga bilihin dulot ng pandemya at uh, global economic crisis. This price increases of, uh, of the most basic commodities now uh, necessitates and review the, of the law in order of it uh, to adjust the demands uh, of the times. Ayon po sa Philippine Veterans Affairs Office noong 2021 sa halos sigit na 151,000 Pilipinong sundalong nakipaglaban sa ikalawang uh, pandaigdigan digmaan, may halos 2,952 ang buhay at kasama pa rin natin at may 279 na higit 100 years old na. No, samantalang 2,635 veterans naman po ang nasa edad na 90 hanggang 99. Um, their heroism and uh, selflessness in, uh, in troubled times have uh, exemplified nationalism. Ang kanilang mga sakripisyo at ang pag-aalay ng kanilang sariling buhay at uh, kaligtasan sa ngalan ng ating bansa ay higit nating dapat kilalanin. Uh, no amount of money will be commensurate with their, with their bravery. Hindi matutumbasan ng kanilang uh, kabayanihan. Eh, saludo po kami, saludo po ako sa kanila. Uh, ibuos natin ang suporta natin para sa kanila. Kaya naman umasa kung may papasa natin ang panukalang batas na ito uh, bilang pagkilala sa mga makasaysayang sakripisyo ng ating mga war veterans. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mabuhay po kayo. Thank you, uh, Senator Revilla. Okay, uh, uh, Secretary Carlos, uh, balak pong institutionalize yung LCAP. May, may we know your inputs? Thank you very much, uh, Senator Jingoy. Thank uh, you for inviting me. Uh, 
secretary before that, may we call on the secretary of uh, this committee to to please introduce the resource persons? <laughs> Sorry. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, for today's public hearing, allow me to acknowledge the presence of the following resource persons. From the National Security Council, we have the National Security Advisor, Secretary Clarita Reyes Carlos. She is joined with Deputy Director General Michael Eric Castillo. And virtually, uh, Deputy Director General CUS Chris Villanueva Libunao and Deputy Director General Nestor Herrico. From the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Corps Conflict or NTFL CAC, we have its Executive Director, Lieutenant General Emmanuel Salamat. Together with Director Monico Batle and Attorney Miriam Grace Nolasco. From the National Intelligence Coordinating Agency, attending virtually, we have Deputy Director General Restituto Santos. From the Department of National Defense, we are joined by Attorney R.J. Lim. And also with us virtually is Officer in Charge General Jose Faustino Jr. From the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we have... Major General Alex Rillera, Brigadier General Rommel Roldan, and Colonel Christopher Shubal. And virtually, we have Captain Anthony Cabarteja. From the Philippine Veterans Affairs Office, we are joined today by Yusek Reynaldo Mapagu, together with Attorney Rolando Villaflor. From the Department of the Interior and Local Government, we are joined by, uh, virtually by Attorney Ralph Jerome Ifurong. From the National Police Commission, we have Vice Chair Alberto A. Bernardo. From the Philippine National Police, um, we have uh, Police Brigadier General Limuel Obon and Police Brigadier General Robert Rodriguez joining us virtually. And lastly, from the Public Attorney's Office, representing um, Chief Acosta, Chief Presida Acosta, we have Attorney Rigel Salvador and Attorney Demeter Huerta. Thank you. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Comsec. Uh, before that, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Uh, uh, Secretary Carlos, please continue. Thank you very much. Um, your honors, I have been uh, requested to, <clears throat> to make some remarks in regard to Senate Bill number 200, in regard to um, institutionalizing the task force ntf -ALCA. Let me preface my comments by uh, quoting our president, who in every cabinet meeting talks about the need to restructure our bureaucracy. And maybe a little bit of commercial, I wrote a book on bureaucratic reform, and therefore I'm very, very uh, cognizant of the duplication, the overlaps, and the unclear lines of authority among our government agencies. What this results in would be not only a contest of jurisdiction, but also a tremendous waste of government resources, both human as well as non-human resources. Given these prefatory remarks, I believe that it is not in order to institutionalize the ntf -LCAC into a council. What we are doing here, what is being suggested here, is for a task force to have substantive legal personality so it becomes a council. And therefore, it will have a life of its own and will continue to address something which I think is time bound. The great success, I am, by the way, the vice chair of the, this task force. The chairman is the president of the republic. And 
our indicator of the greatest success of the NTF LCAP is that it will be rendered obsolescent. Because that means you would have embedded all the functions of the task force into the existing agencies of the government. In other words, all the agencies of the government would have embraced the kinds of activities, projects, and programs that the NTF LCAC is helping them, uh, helping embed in their own institution. So given this, uh, how would you call this, assumptive framework, um, I would argue that let the NTF LCA continue with its mandate, continue with the legal personality rendered by Executive Order 70, but giving it a certain level of permanency into a council may not be in order. Thank you. Can it pursue its mandate if we institutionalize it, uh, Secretary? Well, Right now, actually, if you look at the uh, uh, Senate bill uh, proposed by Senator De La Rosa, it practically just echoed the, the NTF LCAC mandate. What is different here is that as a task force, a task force has time one, which is the start, and time sub n, time sub n, meaning we don't know when, the time two, time sub two, et cetera, when it will end, and it will end where the reason for its being has already ended. And so we assume, therefore, uh, that the end for which the task force was organized would end sometime at time sub n. We don't know that end, so we say it's time sub n. Therefore, to institutionalize it might not be in order uh, anymore, because by that time, you would have embedded all the functions of the task force in the existing agencies already. So. To uh, re repeat, because Senator uh, De La Rosa was not here when I made my prefatory remarks, this would be in line with the general guidance of the president, which he repeats every cabinet meeting, that we should restructure our government bureaucracy for a leaner and meaner uh, bureaucracy. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, Senator De La Rosa, please. Yes, ma'am. First of all, Mr. Chair, uh, as far as the uh, lifespan of the council is concerned, we have here section 12, sunset close. Uh, the council shall be rendered fun functus officio upon the accomplishment of the purposes for which it was created or only sooner dissolved by the president. Kaya, uh, yung life ng task force, as uh, said by uh, uh, Secretary, as, Secretary Carlos, na anytime pwede itong uh, ma-dissolve. The same is true with this uh, council because nakalagay naman dito, pag uh, wala nang problema sa insurgency, then hindi na kailangan itong uh, council ito, so i-dissolve natin. Ang purpose lang naman dito, that's why I would like to uh, institutionalize the task force para sigurado talaga na ang focus ay andyan. Because uh, alam mo, ma'am, without Without uh, uh, wala pa yung task force noon, look, saan tayo napunta sa problema natin sa insurgency? 50 years, more than 50 years, andyan pa rin problema. Pero yung ginawa yung EO70, ang laking pagbabago. Ang laking nawala sa problema natin. So, kaya gusto ko institutionalize ito for purposes of continuity para sigurado talaga na tuloy-tuloy ito Dahil nga, kung hindi natin ito institutionalize, magbago man yung isip ng presidente, hindi natin siya pangunahan, ha? pero magbago man yung, mag-ship man yung palisin niya na mawalan siya ng gana dito sa uh, insurgency na ito, eh pwede niyang uh, uh, i-defunct yung, uh, yung task force. Pero pag uh, ito institutionalize na Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman, i eh, Andiyan yan, may batas na through legislation. Hindi na basta-basta yan na uh, isnabi ng Pangulo, dahil andiyan na, uh, may batas na tayo. So, I, I think, uh, yun lang naman ang habol ko dyan. Pero, in a way, hindi naman kami ang makipagpatayan dyan, makipaglaban dyan sa mga NPA na yan. Kayo naman, nasa executive, din na uh, bahala kayo. Kung ayaw ninyo, din wala akong magawa. Kami, gusto lang namin talaga tulungan kayo. Because I've been there, I have fought this... Uh, 
communist for a long time. I have lost a lot of my men in my war and my, uh, in my battles against the SNP. Kaya alam ko kung gaano kahirap itong problema ito. Nakita ko itong glimmer of hope ng ginawa itong task force na ito, itong ilkak na ito. Nakita ko napakaganda pala nito. Ito na ang hinihintay namin noon na sabi nga rito, hindi ba kami, what kind of war is this? Tayo lang pinabayaan ng gobyerno magkipagira, magkipagpatayan sa mga NPA. Samantala itong DSWD, itong DOH, itong DPWH, even the National Security Establishment. Wala pa kaya lang because they're sitting inside their chair, hindi inside their office. Nagpapalamig lang sa opisina. Kami doon sa field, kami nagkipagpatayan, kami ang nasasaktan, kami ang nahihirapan. Kaya ngayong sinadur na ako, I want to give back what is due to the people na napakam nag nang namatay na binuhis yung buhay dito sa problema ng insurgency. Gusto ko silang tulungan na mawala na talaga ito just to honor them. Eh kung ayaw ninyo sa executive ng abi proposal din what can we do? You will be the one implementing this law. Eh kung gagawin natin ito Pagdating doon sa Malacanang, sabihin ni National Security Advisor, Mr. President, ibito mo yung, uh, yung batas ni Bato na yan. Wala, wala yan. Hindi namin suportahan yan. So, wala rin. Sayang din. Akin lang naman is, uh, we are here to help you solve the insurgency problem. That's all, ma'am. Uh, yun lang po. Salamat. Thank you, uh, Senator De La Rosa. Your comment, uh, yeah. Secretary. Yes, thank you very much, Senator De La Rosa. You have made very compelling arguments why it should be made into a council. And because I'm a scholar, I'm willing to change my mind. I forgot there is a sunset clause there. Yes, it would render itself obsolescent when the reason for its being uh, would, have been, uh, would have been obliterated. So I'm willing to change my mind for the record. I'm now withdrawing what I earlier articulated. <laughs> Thank you, my dear you, friend, Thank Senator Padilla. Yes, because that's what scholarship is all about. When you are confronted with compelling arguments, change your mind. Otherwise, you are a bigot. Thank you. <laughs> I love I... it. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I remember Senator Miriam Defensor Santiago. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, General Salamat, do you have any inputs with regard to the uh, bill of Senator De La Rosa? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair, and to everyone. Uh, just for a preliminary, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I am a two-year-old uh, executive director of the National Task Force ending law. To end you were appointed by President Duterte. Yeah. Okay. Pre no, no, sir. The the President uh, Bong Bong, uh, President Marcos. Oh, President Marcos appointed you. Okay. Uh, two months. Yeah, Two months, months ago. Uh, two months. Two years yata, Two months ago. Sorry, sir. Mm. Two, two months ago. Sorry. Two okay. Months ago. May term limit ba yan? May term limit? Wala naman po. Sir. Okay. Wala. So, um, at present, sir, we are... Uh, I will not disagree with uh, uh, the good senator, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, in fact, uh, we are uh, uh, very much uh, grateful for, for the... Uh, a proposal of the uh, of Senator Ronald De La Rosa for proposing bill uh, Senate Bill 2000, other known, other known as the LCAC Act. Uh, at present, so we are reviewing our uh, current structure and mechanism uh, how we can perform well our our tasks, and uh, it requires actually sir a, a very good um, monitoring and and evaluation to be able really to uh, look at what the task force is really doing. And uh, in fact, we have said that the National Task Force, LCAC, is the game changer in our anti-insurgency campaign. Uh, no, uh, you cannot see in the history where we can see the influx of a number of uh, rebel returnees uh, former rebels who have surrendered to the government and uh, a lot of development outcomes that we have been facilitated through the uh, its uh, hallmark uh, flagship project, the, what we call the Barangay Development Program. So that said, sir, uh, uh, we would like first to, uh, for the committee to consider sir, the uh, National Task Force LCAP, uh Consider the renaming instead of uh, of of 
uh, maintaining the title ending local communist uh, armed conflict uh, to a, a more more uh, relevant uh, uh, title, which is what we call uh, what I, I say a national coordinating agency for local peace and development. For Can you repeat it again? National national coordinating agencies for local peace and development for conflict affected areas. Um, national coordinating agency for local peace and development for conflict affected areas. Sir, ang, the the problem now is uh, after uh, all the uh, the airport of the national task force. The question is what now? Mm -hmm. uh, we have started the. Uh, providing a significant support to to the conflict areas uh, cleared from uh, what we call a communist terrorist group local terrorist group and um, but the problem is the sustaining airport we only provide for example we provide a uh, 20 million uh, development permanent development program uh, which is up to the uh, barangay cleared uh, what program they they will uh, uh, undertake. For example, farm to market road. We only provide one uh, 12 million power to market road, which is not enough to complete the whole uh, road requirements for a isolated barangay. Uh, it, the 12 million uh, for farm to market road is only for one kilometer. And then we have another core program of the of the NTFL core barangay development program is the uh, Two, um, two door, uh, two room building, school building, which is only cost for four million. And then we have the um, health center, and uh, we have the uh, electrification program for two million, and the livelihood program for one point five billion. So, actually, it's it's just the start of everything uh, of the. Uh, the assistance that we need to provide to our barangay. So the problem is sustaining effort after this. Mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, if we will have to institutionalize the, the national task force, we need a, a, a relevant uh, agencies that will still continue to coordinate all the efforts among the, member, uh, among the relevant agencies that are at stake uh, uh, or involved in the uh, assistance program for our uh, conflict affected areas. How, how much budget have you received? <clears throat> so we don't receive any budget. The budget is uh, directly downloaded to the implementing agencies, which is the, the ILG. The DILG? The ILG. So the Barangay Development Program, the budget receiving by the National Task is for only for the operation of the National Secretariat for a minimal budget of uh, 39 million for the national secretary for the whole year but mm -hmm. for the barangay development program uh, it's directly downloaded to the uh, the ALG, the ALG uh, to implement the projects for the uh, core programs of the uh, national task force okay. mm -hmm. so 20 million yes, sir 20 million each for barangay M mr chair yeah. please thank you mr chair so uh, what are you trying to drive at sir is that uh, uh, ang problema mo is uh, hindi niyo masustain uh, yung ba yung ibig mo sabihin dahil 20 million lang yung binibigay sa, sa bawat barangay na cleared parang ganon budget wise hindi, uh, hindi sustainable kasi ano sir it's just a beginning of our assistance support to our um, starting community to thrive kaya, kaya nga so ang concern mo is uh, yung continuity niya sir continuity but anyway sir yung nga Gusto nating i-permanente ito from task force going commission dahil nga para a council para makontinue yung efforts ng uh, ELCAC. Ang problema mo ang coordination, I think it's the, the coordination will be more strong, is, uh, will be getting stronger with the establishment of this uh, council. Sure. Pagkatapos kasi nung, ano, uh, it's already uh, provided in the provision is after the, the mission of the National Commission, National Council is ended, mawawala na rin yung National Commission. But what I'm saying here is uh, yung continuity of our effort to sustain the development programs for the local barangay communities are continued. So yung, I think it's also better to have a very good transition program before we end up 
before we transition to a, a relevant agencies and then under a a relevant department who will undertake the program. Kasi mahirap kung talagang agency lang siya na walang program na a department that will shoulder or, uh, and responsible for the implementation of all these development outcomes that we uh, envision to have a sustainable peace and achieving uh, achieving sustain, lasting peace and sustainable development for uh, conflict affected and, and poor communities. Peter Chair. Uh, we have received your report on the implementation of the uh, Barangay Development Program. Can you please update us on the effects of its accelerated implementation, particularly in advocating uh, peace and development? Mr. Chair, uh, as of now, uh, uh, for the first release of the... Please turn on your microphone. Uh, Mr. Chair, in 2020, the National Task Force End-to-End uh, -end Local Communist Armed Conflict has requested about $16 billion, uh, to cover the BDP packages for 2021. Uh, to prioritize the 822 barangays uh, cleared for the period from 2016 to 2019. And under the program, each barangay would receive the development projects worth 20 million. And the BDP consists of the three core, pro uh, core projects, farm to market roads, school building, water and sanitation, health station and livelihood for this cleared barangay. So out of the total of the Two, out of the total, 2,300 individual projects, 927 or 42% are farm to market roads. So we have provided, ano na po, na, na po ng 42% or 927 farm to market roads, 515 or 24% are water sanitation system, 171 or 8% are rural e electrification, and 100 57 or 7 percent are health station and 135 or 6 percent are school buildings and 180 or 8 percent are livelihood projects and 101 or 5 percent are support to indigenous community. For budget allocation out of the uh, 16 billion, the region 11 got the 4.3 billion or 26 percent tapos it's uh, also distributed to caraga region uh, region 12 and uh, other regions allocated of course so uh, those are 17 regions po okay Pero can po you just please yes. submit to the uh, committee yes, the, uh, in order to exp expedite the uh, proceedings you just submit the accomplishment report before this committee for yes, us to determine yes, yes, if we yes, still need to institutionalize the uh, NTF LCAC, please. Uh, uh, Secretary Carlos, uh, two questions lang po. We've received reports that the uh, NTF LCAC's direction is that there should be no more talks with uh, Joma Sison. Am I correct? and would instead recommend to uh, President Marcos to offer amnesty to surrendering insurgents. Can you please uh, discuss the before this committee the reason behind this? Well, there are actually uh, two time points there. First was uh, when I was just a political scientist and not a national security advisor. And uh, the position I took was that um, since I have followed this closely as a political scientist, I thought that that uh, trajectory was no longer working, meaning it is not producing the product that we desire. And so we say, you know, let's stop doing that. And I sustained that position when I was appointed, but I had to make sure that it hewed closely to what the president also wanted, because now I'm, as ad I'm advising the president of the Republic and I have no business shooting off my mouth as a political scientist and you know, veering away uh, from that, from his position. And I, I understand that. As what a is the position of, of the president, uh, secretary? It, it, this is the same. It's the, the same. same. He has articulated this in several fora. 
And so, because he also saw that the local peace councils were the ones that work. Okay, things that work, continue uh, doing it. If there are uh, infirmities, then, you know, adjust the infirmities. So you improve it and you finesse, you know, the protocols attendant to that. And so we continue to support this position. And I think, uh, you know, if I may uh, be, uh, how do you call it, a bit more candid about, uh, about continuing the national level and talking to people who are not here, those people who are not here have no business making any statements about the things happening here. They want to make any statement, come back here. In fact, I would even advise the president to give them a position, you know, give this person a position and let him run that bureaucracy. Baka pati tenga niya magdugo, no? Sa pag nakita niya yung bureaucracy na ano. You know, it's so easy to criticize. I'm sure that's a general rule, di ba? So if those people are just shooting off their mouths and they're not in this country, then let's challenge them. Balik kayo dito. Diba? At tingnan natin kung ano magawa. Ayaw nga niya umuwi. I'm sorry for this tirade, um, senators. Okay. Uh, senators We're no? used to it, uh, Secretary. Yes, <laughs> yes please. Sometimes, please identify yourself. Okay. Ah, nakarit. Hello. Yeah, I am Michael Eric Castillo. Uh, I am the Deputy Director General for Operations of the National Security Council. But uh, just like Dr. Carlos, I was I was Dr. Carlos's student, and just like Do Dr. Carlos, I I also for the long time I'm with the academe. So I'd like to to comment on the on the peace process from the pa pa policy analysis perspective. Uh, if we ask the question on whether we are going to negotiate uh, at the national level or to just negotiate the way we are doing it now, the first thing that, that we need to do is to try to, uh, to evaluate whether the conflict is in fact ripe for a negotiated solution. And sometime in in uh, 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 year 2000, uh, I, I assisted the, the OPAP before it became OPAP rule in the conduct of scenario building exercise on whether or not there are factors and forces that will in fact, uh, will in fact uh, contribute to uh, the facilitation of a national peace uh, negotiation. There are two fundamental elements that is missing. You know, uh, a, a conflict is ripe for a negoti negotiated solution if the, the contending parties are in fact, they, they have achieved a mutually hurting stalemate. That continuing with the, with the uh, armed conflict is in fact not beneficial to both parties. Then it would be better for the parties to talk and to ne negotiate politically. The other, the other condition where a, a negotiated political solution is, is uh, preferable is when there is already an imbalance of power, meaning one party has the upper hand over the other. In fact, it is a negotiated solution in a sense that you are actually going to give the other party a terms for surrender, and then we are going to achieve peace. But with the, it, in specific terms, when you analyze the CPP, NPA, NDF, and the GRP peace negotiation, what is uh, sorely lacking is, in fact, the control of the CPP over the armed component. You cannot talk to a party that is not consolidated, meaning the, the political front will talk peace. The armed, armed component will do otherwise. So it cannot command. So I think if we are to pursue, if we are to pursue uh, national peace negotiation, I think there must be an evaluation, so that uh, our our decision to talk or not to talk uh, at the national level will be grounded on certain data on the ground. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Secretary, do you agree with your student? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, oh. it's even in the halls of the Senate. Academic freedom is the, <laughs> will have to be invoked. But um, I agree with some and I disagree with some, but this is not the venue for our contentions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Senator De La Rosa, please. 
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yung sinabi ni Sir na uh, pag nakita mo na yung isang party to the negotiation is yung nga, si, the, the, the party, the political party has no control over the armed components Now, which is sinasabi mo is not right for uh, negotiation dahil uh, hindi favorable ang situation for negotiation. Pero Merong cuts dyan eh. Uh, do not be fooled by these people. Baka sinasabi lang nila yan, pinapalabas lang nila yan na wala silang control over their military components. Pero ang totoo niyan, they are very good in deception. Sabi ng party, oh, let's talk. Let's talk. Pero iba yung harap niya yung GRP, iba yung instructions niya sa armed component niya. Alam mo, this insurgency problem will not be here for long, for, for, for this uh, longest period of time, kung hindi deceptive itong mga NPA na ito, uh, si PPNPA na ito. Dahil kung talagang totoo sila, they are true to their uh, desire to make peace with everyone, tapos na itong problema. Wala itong problema. For what? Anong ginagawa nila kapag nagpipistok tayo? Habang nagpipistok tayo, they are there consolidating their people, Regrouping, rearming themselves, at recruitment. Dahil libre yung libre sila pumasok sa mga barangay. Dahil wala, hindi sila hinuhuli. Dahil mayroon tayong pistok. So libre yung libre sila. So alam mo, alam mo, alam mo, enough, enough of this uh, for me ha, for me. Sorry, kung kayo sa academic, sa, sa academic, sa community, I would tend to disagree with me. But enough for this pistok for me. Niluloko lang tayo ng mga tao na ito. Ang ilang tao na tayo nakipag-usap, walang nangyayari. Dahil tayo lang ang sinsiro. Sila, mis, sila dil, hindi sinsiro. Anong ginagawa nila habang nagpipistok? Yun, nangangambos. Let's, let's face it. Yan ang nangyayari. Kaya huwag na huwag na tayo magpaloko. Ngayon pa, na halos lumuluhod na yung mga CPPNPA na ngayon dahil sa nangyayari, dahil sa ILCA, ngayon pa tayo magkipag-negosyate sa kanila? No. It's not the right time. And, uh, sabi mo, right for uh, negotiation kapag the, 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 balance, the, the balance of power is like this. Nandito, nandito tayo. Sila na sa baba. No. It's not right. Ang sabi ko dyan, ano bang after ripe, ano bang after ripe, uh, ripening phase? Yung nalata na ba? Sa Bisaya, yung uh, bulok na. So it's bulok time for, for us to negotiate with them. Let's finish them. Yeah. Uh, sabihin mo, magalit na kayo ng magalit. Basta ako, let's finish the problem. Dahil pag hindi natin ito seryosuhin, as I've said, ako, nag-retire ako sa servisyo with all the scars in my body, with all the death that I have seen. Hintahin ko pa yung anak ko ngayon na kagagraduate lang sa academy will experience the same problem that I have faced when I was young, when I was lieutenant hanggang nag-retire ako. The same problem. Yung anak ko, ganun na niya ang mangyayari sa kanya. Siguro, it's, uh, wala, wala tayong, wala tayong uh, uh, maibigay na magandang kinabukasan sa mga bata na ito kapag hindi natin tapusin itong problema na ito. Yun lang, Mr. Chair. Thank, Thank you, you uh, Senator De La Rosa. Since uh, Senator De, De La Rosa does not want to uh, negotiate anymore, are there any other options? <laughs> I suppose we don't have any options that left, and therefore the real politic tells us that the local peace council is the way to go. There's no other way. Yes, uh, Director Castillo. Uh, sir, we are aware that that they are only instrumentalizing the peace process and that we are also aware that they are employing dual tactics of you know peace negotiation and armed struggle so okay any other questions uh, and mr chair alam mo pag uh, na institutionalize na itong localized peace talks sigurado ko number one pinakaayaw yan si Joma magwawala yun wag kayong mag uh, enter into local peace talks pero itong mga tao nila na matagal na naghirap yung palaging naharas na attack ng uh, army ng police sigurado ako mag uh, kuha niyan makipag-enter ng negotiation niyan dahil pagod na yan sila actually wala ka na nga i-negotiate ngayon for punta ka doon sa yung pinaka malakanyang ng NPA doon sa uh, Davao de Oro yung Compostela Bali Province 
sinong representative ng army dito? Meron pa bang uh, uh, guerrilla front doon? Wala na. Wala ka naman negosyo. Sabi na sa akin, Sir, apat na lang yung nasa Dabo Oriental. Apat na lang na NPA yan ang hinahabol namin. Apat na lang yan. Eh, bakit ka pa makipag-localize pistok yan? Wala lang yung pistok-pistok. Uh, wala. Yung istok-istok na lang. <laughs> apat na lang yan eh. Habulin ninyo. Habulin nyo lang apat. Tapusin ninyo. Wala na pistok. Localized or nationalized or international pistok. Wala yan, nag-enjoy lang yan sila doon, magkape-kape doon sa mga hotel sa Netherlands para gagastos ang pera ang gobyerno. Eh, tapusin na yan. Kukunti na lang. I, I, I am serious. Nasa dulo na tayo. Dulo na tayo ng labanan. Patapos na ito. Pag matapos natin ito, Philippines will, be become, will become a very beautiful country pag mawala ang problema sa insurgency. I tell you, Napakaganda ng Pilipinas. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So, ibig sabihin, kaya natin to. Kaya natin to. Okay. <laughs> okay uh, Secretary, regarding uh, red tagging, can you comment on, on what uh, is your position on the issue that uh, the NTF, LCAC, alleges, allegedly resorts to red tagging of personalities and uh, groups uh, critical of the government? Again, uh, with your indulgence, two time points. First, as a political scientist, before I was appointed, I already articulated my view in regard to that. Another term for red tagging is labeling people. When you label, you don't explain. You simply label. You, know, you put a name on a person. So, Example, uh, Secretary. Can you give us an example? Senator Estrada is a communist. Does that explain you? No. Of course, I can say that you espouse the ideology of communism. Nothing wrong with that. This is a liberal democracy. You can be a socialist or whoever. But when you hold a gun and attempt to overthrow the government, you've crossed the line. And I don't know why I should call you. I should call you when you hold a gun and you murder and you kidnap. You're a criminal, isn't it? When you're a criminal, I throw the books at you, penal code. That's what I mean. You use a label, and that label has concomitants. The concomitant is, you know, you do this, and there are consequences for your action. That's the reason why. I said there's another time point. The other time point is now that I have this opposition, and I have not changed my mind. I'm still a social scientist. I think I'll be a social scientist until I die, because that's my, that's my calling. That's my profession as a scholar. And therefore, red tag does not work. Red tagging, labeling people does not work as a matter of principle. Therefore, why are we doing that? Nagsasayang lang tayo ng laway natin, red tagging. If you want to tag somebody, tag somebody that, so there will be concomitants after the tagging. Otherwise, you know, it's a non-productive pursuit. And I still hold on to that position, mm -hmm. um, honorable senators. Thank, Thank you. you very much, uh, Secretary. Mr. Chairman. Se Senator De La Rosa. <laughs> uh, just to be clear about it, hindi naman ang gobyerno nag-read tag nito mga tao na ito. It is Joma season. Nagsabi sa ka, very clear sa kanyang video. Itong National Democratic Front, itong CPP, itong NPA, itong tatlo na ito, ay kailangan ito para magkakaisa para pabagsakin ang gobyerno. So ngayon, kasama itong tatlo na ito, Siya mismo nagrigtag ng partilis ng kabataan, partilis ng Gabriela, partilis ng uh, uh, anak bayan. Si Juma si so mismo nagsabi. So, ang military establishment naman, sinundan lang yung linya ni Juma Sison. So, paano ngayon sasabihin natin na counterproductive itong uh, redtagging, kung if determined redtagging, ha? para sa akin, that's truth tagging. Walang... It's not false. It's truth. Na talaga na nakalinya sila sa NPA. CPP NPA. Uh, you may call me as a judgmental or what, but time will, uh, time will uh, be at my side when I say this. Na sila ay nakakunik doon sa, sa CPP NPA. Hindi, konektado yan sila lahat. Alam mo kung ayong uh, redtagging. Uh, panahon na ito ngayon ng saan ka ba? Wala, puti ka. Magsabi ka. Kasi kung Sabi mong gray ka, ay, that, that's, hindi yan maganda. Hindi maganda pag gray ka. Kalaban ka ba o kakampi ka? 
Yan yun, 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 yun lang yun. Pag, pag mawala yung gray area na yan, tapos ang problema ng Pilipinas. Tapos ang problema. Dahil pinabayaan natin, lumaki yung gray area na yan, in between red and uh, black and white, lumaki yung gray area, kaya exploit ng gusto ng kalaban itong gray area na ito. Kaya, ah, for me ha, for me, once you support the CPP and PAU, once you espouse lahat-lahat na kagustuhan nila, you are a supporter of the CPP and PAU, but I, I am not telling you that you are illegal and illegal personality. I respect your belief, but then again, as far as the political spectrum is, is uh, concerned, magkaiba tayong uh, uh, dulo ng spectrum. So, I consider you as... Uh, Kabila ka. Kasi kung pabayaan lagi natin itong puro sa gray area, walang mangyari itong problema natin. Walang katapusan. Again, uh, I respect your position, pero sabi ni Juma Season, siya mismo nag-read tag nitong mga supposed to be legal, legal plan ng NPA. Legal kuno, pero very supportive sa cause ng kabila, ng kalaban. Uh, yun lang, Mr. Chairman. Secretary Carlos. Um, actually, Senator De La Rosa, Your Honor, I have no quarrel with you in regard to that. Uh, Jose Maria Season, uh, Jose Maria Season can just shoot off his mouth and say anything, and even say that X, Y, Z are in fact, uh, you know, aligned with uh, his uh, political ideology and. The, its action component. But what I'm suggesting and what I'm stressing is that beyond the labeling, we ask the question, so what? That's the reason why I say we need precision in the use of our terms. If you simply say that X person is a communist, a socialist, or whatever, then the next question would be, so what? So I say the so what will be answered by a more precise term by saying that this person is a criminal, is a murderer, is a kidnapper, etc. Because you can take an action subsequent to that label. Uh, what's his name? Jose Maria Zizon has ev every right to declare whatever he wants to declare. But I think we have every right as the Republic of the Philippines and its agencies to do something about that after the label has been given. But, you know, ab initio, from the beginning, labels by themselves will not advance explanation. And as a social scientist, anything that does not advance explanation, I say, is a waste of time. That is the context uh, uh, from which I'm coming, uh, Senator De La Rosa. This is not to denigrate your position. I absolutely, in fact, am in agreement with you. It's just, I guess, that um, our floors and ceilings might be different at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. okay uh, we will now terminate the uh, uh, deliberations on this uh, on the bill of uh, Senator De La Rosa. So those involved, uh, those not involved in the next uh, bill that we are going to be to be discussed, may be excused. Yes, uh, Director. Um with your indulgence, Senators, uh, may I already leave the Senate yes. Hall. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, uh, just for the compliance of the uh, National Task Force, we have already submitted the complete uh, uh, documentation of the accomplishment of the National okay. Task Force. Uh, Thank you very much. To your office last September 12th. Uh, all right. Thank you. Uh, with regard to the ATF LCAC? Yes, sir. Mm. Uh, j j before we, we, we discuss the other matters, sir, uh, I think uh, uh, I, 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 I read the, uh, the EO70 institutionalizing also the LCAC and the mm. draft Senate bill. The draft of uh, Senator yes. De La Rosa? Yes. And 
And again, from from uh, policy analysis perspective, I think uh, for the bill to have to be more robust, I tried to look at each provision of the the proposed bill. Sir, there is nothing there about mandates on monitoring and evaluation. So mm -hmm. there must be a provision there that talks about that it is mandatory, whether it is done, uh, well, ideally third party, to conduct an annual monitoring of the projects being implemented by LCAC, whether it is a, a, a summative summary or end of project summary. So that's one thing that may be added, that should be added as provision in the, in the current Senate bill. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe you can uh, just uh, submit your inputs uh, before this committee okay. in order to expedite the proceedings. And maybe we can uh, make amendments to the bill of uh, yeah to the bill of Senator De La Rosa. Yes, and and another provision, sir, is that that may be considered to be added is actually to mandate to mandate NEDA to give preferential focus to conflict vulnerable areas in national development planning. Basta yung lahat ng mga amendments mo, uh, kailangan may justification. Okay, so it's easy to justify uh, when we uh, give out the committee report. Okay. okay? Thank you. Uh, uh, Papaalam na rin po ako, Senator. Uh, Senator De La Rosa. Alam mo, yung input sila, na, napakaganda po yun. Uh, we are willing, uh, being the author of that uh, mm. bill, I'm willing to... Uh, Accept your amendments. Pag ibigay mo lang through committee amendments. Oh. Thank you. He submit with justification. Ah. Okay. The reason why. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Attorney Lim. Uh, and to, with regard to NT NTF LCAC. Y yes, uh, Your Honor. Mm. Uh, the Department of National Defense was not included in the member agencies. That's why we are proposing that we be included. Also, yes. uh, Your Honor, uh, the OIC and uh, DND is present online i think he has something to say okay in who is uh, who is the representative from the department of national defense uh, uh, your honor i'm representing uh, the department of national okay. defense however the oic dnd is present online and i, I think who is he, present online oic dnd uh, secretary Faustino, uh, your honor the secretary Faustino is online does you want to say something Mr. Chair, this yes is your honor Oh, can we, can we recognize Secretary Faustino? Yes. Uh, the, uh, as mentioned by uh, Attorney Lim, uh, your, your Honor, uh, Mr. Chair, the, if we look at the draft of the, uh, uh, the bill, the Department of National Defense is not included in the list of agencies. Uh, as we reviewed it yesterday, uh, and uh, may we propose uh, that uh, the Department of National Defense be included in the list of agencies in Senator De La Rosa, the uh, uh, Department of National Defense, which I think is very vital, is not included in the uh, in the bill. The agencies, uh, which uh, uh, Mr. Am Chair, I correct, Mr. Chair, yes. Can, can I ask uh, Music Mapago? Uh, no, no, no. Secretary Faustino is online. Uh, uh, nagsabi, no, wala yung... Faustino was not with the DND at that time. I think he was just, he was uh, with the uh, AP. Kaya... Ah, okay, okay, okay. Wala, wala, kasi, wala kasi yung Department Ganito, of Mr. National Chair. Defense Ganito. dito. Meron pala yan, pero clerical, purely clerical uh, error, Mr. Chair. Hindi na ilagay. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, sorry, uh, Secretary Faustino. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Uh, we're uh, happy that. Uh, po namin. Of course, we have to include the Department of National Defense. <laughs> They're the ones Matangkal fighting. Matangkal ibang uh, department. Wag lang yung Department of National Defense. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, it's good you reminded Senator Del Rosa. Maybe he had some senior moments. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any more concerns, uh, Secretary Faustino? Uh, that's all, sir. We are in full support of the uh, uh, passage of this bill into law. Uh, so you are in agreement general. that uh, you are in favor of institutionalizing this uh, uh, NTF LCAC. Am I correct? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary Faustino. Anybody still wants to uh, give their inputs or... Uh, comments regarding the, the bill of Senator De La Rosa? 
no more. So thank you, Attorney Lim, uh, for reminding us to, uh, for the Department of National Defense to be included uh, as a member of the National Council to End Local Communist Armed Conflict. So, so doon sa mga wala na connection sa susunod na pag-usapan, pwede na po kayong umuwi. Okay, now we will proceed with the, the bill on rationalizing the uh, disability pension of veterans, amending for the purpose, Purposes Republic Act Number no. 6948, entitled an act standardizing and, upgr and upgrading the benefits for military veterans and their beneficiaries as amended. And uh, this this bill was filed by this representation. And Senate Bill Number no. 911, an act rationalizing the disability pension of veterans, amending for the purpose Republic Act 6948, entitled an act standardizing and upgrading the benefits for military veterans and their beneficiaries, as amended by Senator Sani Angara. Any comments? Uh, any inputs? You Yusek Mapago? Uh, Your comments with regard to this bill? These bills, rather. Mr. Chair, Your Honors, uh, uh, good afternoon. Thank yes. you very much for inviting us and uh, giving us the opportunity. Uh, the Philippine Veterans Affairs Office uh, welcomes today's committee hearing as a positive step towards improving the welfare of our country's veterans. It is a reassurance to our veterans that we are not forgetting them, your Mr. Chair, your honors. And therefore, uh, PVAO expresses its full support to Senate Bill uh, 683 filed by the Honorable uh, Chair, uh, Jingoy Hersto Estrada, and Senate Bill 911 filed by the Honorable Sani Angara. As these bills will truly benefit our dis disability pensioners by increasing their disability pension. And we also support, fully support Senate Bill 700 filed by the Honorable Ramon Bong Revilla Jr. to increase the pension of veterans by 3,000 pesos. And we commit ourselves to work with the Senate and hope that these legislative measures will eventually become laws. Uh, Mr. Chair, your honors, it has been uh, nearly 28 years since the old age pension and disability pension rates were enacted into law. That was in 1994, pa. And since then, the only increase was by virtue of Republic Act 11164. This only covers the old age pension of uh, living World War II veterans and living veterans of the Korean and Vietnam Wars who are not receiving uh, AFP pension. For us, uh, the passage of these measures may mean legislative accomplishments. But for our veterans, it means additional disposable income that they can use for their everyday living expenses. And more importantly, it is a tangible manif manifestation of the whole government's continued pledge to ensure the welfare of our country's veterans by guaranteeing their pension is responsive to their current needs. Again, we thank you, uh, your honors. Uh, we thank the Senate for these measures and look forward to working in partnership with this August body to provide the best benefits that we can give to our veterans who fought and defended our country's democracy and our people's ideals. And assurance to all of them that uh, they are not forgotten. Paraming salamat po. Thank you, uh, Yusek Mapago. Mm. Do you have the date of the number of how many veterans are still alive? Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, your honors. So you said it, uh, 28 years na hindi pa na increasean, correct? Uh, yes. Uh, so how much Chair, are the veterans receiving as pension? Uh, those without, uh, those who are not receiving uh, AP pension, your honors, uh, Mr. Chair, your honors, uh, uh, principally World War II veterans, uh, they're just receiving 20,000 pesos. A month? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, your honors. And if uh, the bill of uh, honorable... Uh, Bong, uh, Senator Bong Revilla will be approved. Uh, that will increase to uh, 3,000, so maging 23,000 pesos. Uh, Malit pa rin. Opo, malit pa rin. Mm. 
Ilan pa yung nabubuhay ng mga veterano natin? Uh, I have the data here, Mr. Uh, your Honor. Mr. Chair, your Honors. So as of uh, August uh, this year, uh, Mr. Chair, your Honors, uh, we have uh, World War II veterans at uh, 1,683. Boy, pa. Uh, they are the ones uh, receiving pension. Okay. Boy, pa po. Ano yung average age nila? One ninety, you know. Uh, there are a number of center centenarians. Uh, nabanggit kanina ni ano ni uh, Mr. Chair, uh, your honors ni Senator Revilla. At as of August 2022, we have. Uh, 204 centenarians. 200? 204 po. Marami. Opo. Uh, ano kaya sekreto nila? Uh, uh, I will find out your honors. Ano kaya tanong naman? Uh, the oldest is, uh, in our, uh, based on our records, uh, 112 years old. 112? Opo. And, He's uh, the oldest living person. Uh, uh, based on our records, there's also Handa, one... Siguro sa kung bansa natin, siguro siya na yung pinakamutanda. I mean... 112 years old? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, your honors. Uh, do you get in touch with him? Uh, we we have contact with them. Uh, yeah. Yes, he is Mr. from? I'll find out, uh, Mr. Hmm. Chair, your honors. Uh, I just have the figure of the... And please ask him what his secret is, huh? Uh, I will uh, comply, uh, Mr. <laughs> Chair, your honors. Hmm. So you have uh, how many? 204. 204 Asoba. Centenarians. Uh, okay. Yes, Mr. Chair, your honors. Are you mga 90 years old and above? 90 to uh, 99 years old, uh, we still have 1,484 veterans. Oh. So, itong 1,200, siguro itong mga iba rito may mga sakit na, siyempre, it's unavoidable na because of their age. May mga sakit na uh, uh, yes, Mr. Chair, your honors. Uh, marami dito yung ano, uh, bedridden. Uh, but I've seen one from uh, from La Union, Luna, when we had our uh, event there last uh, oh, last last month. He is 104 years old, but uh, still uh, very strong. Uh, gusto pa niya maglakad. Uh, walang akay? Uh, walang akay, but... Uh, Wala po raw. Kuminsan, uh, Wala. Yung 112 years old. Anong I, I do not know status, uh, Mr. Chair, your honor. Mm -hmm. I'll find out. Uh, he's uh, bedridden. Uh, ah, bedridden na. Yun, 104, malakas pa. Malakas Baka pag treadmill pa kaya. Bata daw yung asawa. Mm, bata. Ang <laughs> Senator Padilla. Magandang uh, hapon po sa inyo, mahal na taga-Pangulo. At uh, magandang hapon po sa ating mga panauhin. May tanong lang po ako uh, tungkol po dito. Ang sabi po dito, ang unused appropriations o hindi po nagamit sa pondo ng PIVAO noong 2021 ay 96.5 million. At tinatayang 84.5 million naman po ngayong 2022. Maari po bang malaman kung ano po ang uh, hinaharap ng uh, PIVAO sa implement, implementasyon po ng inyong mandato at uh, ano po ang status ng uh, benefit claims po ng mga veterano natin ngayong taong ito? Gaano po ba ka-efektibo yung uh, pamamahagi ng non-pension benefits para sa mga qualified recipients po? <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Chair, your honors, uh, thank you for that uh, question, uh, Mr. Chair, your honors. Yung sa, un, uh, the first uh, item was the uh, unobligated, unused uh, budget. Uh, actually, uh, as far as uh, our pension is concerned, uh, uh, being given by the Philippine Veterans Affairs Office, Mr. Chair, your honors, uh, these pensions are uh, what we call flat rate. So, uh, 
for World War II veterans, that's 20,000. And uh, for, uh, for the total uh, admin disability, it's 1,700. So it's flat rate. So uh, the, the amount uh, not used, uh, uh, this will be uh, actually uh, returned to uh, the Bureau of Treasury if they are unused. But uh, we have a continuing one, uh, a, a system where uh, we are uh, actually uh, checking on uh, the uh, updating the, the records or even the, uh, the uh, qualifications of our veterans in terms of uh, if they are still alive or not because... Uh, 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 Hindi po ba kaya sayang yung pera po na ibinabalik pa sa national government? Bakit po kaya kung, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, your honors, ibabalik natin yan kung talagang eh, hindi na talaga ma-obligate, ma, 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 maibigay. But, Apo, bakit po kaya hindi siya nagagamit? Uh, sobra yung, po yung pera o ano pong... Yung iba kasi kung minsan uh, uh, may mga veterans na hindi nag-update uh, uh, it took us, uh, it, it takes about three months because if there is one veteran who dies, naka-reflect lang po yan sa local Hindi civil registry. Hindi po nakukuha. Hindi po nakukuha. Ito pa po nakaka-capture ng uh, Philippine Statistics Authority sa national. It will take about three months. So, and then if there are inactive accounts for three months, parang red flag yon. So we have uh, 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 depository banks and institutions that we have... Uh, memorandum of agreement with them. So if three months, it's, if there is a pension account that's uh, inactive for three months, uh, red flag na po yun, hindi na po sila, you know, uh, 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 sir, ibig niyo pong sabihin, pag namatay na po yung veterano, automatic po hinto na po yung pension niya. Opo, uh, bibigay yan sa wife. Wife, opo. opo. Ano so bibigay pension. pa rin po. Opo, opo. opo. So paano Paano po kaya yun? Un yung unused na yun, magiging utang po yun? Ganun ba? O paano pong magiging ano doon sa pera na yun? Actually, nagagamit pa po natin yun, Mr. Chair, your honors. Uh, kung pa po yun lang po ang concern ko, sir. Sana magamit po lahat kasi mga bayani natin yan. Opo, opo. opo. Nagagamit po. And then, dun po sa the other question, I think, Mr. Chair, your honors, yung about non-pension benefits, uh, uh, ito po yung ano yung uh, sa hospitalization may uh, uh, reimbursement scheme po tayo diyan so in in areas where or even here in metro manila if there are veterans that uh, uh, for example the, his case is a uh, medical case is uh, emergency in nature instead of going to the veterans medical center kung taga dito siya kasi uh, emergency dadaan pa sa isang pinakamalapit na ospital. In like manner, dun sa mga probinsya, ganun din. Uh, uh, may mga requirements lang po yan, uh, Mr. Chair Honors, but we can reimburse yung mga gastusi nila. But yung sa mga maintenance medicines po, nare-reimburse po natin yun. Talagang uh, our target is uh, no veteran should pay for his own medicine. Napakaganda po. Tama lang po yun. Sapagkat, uh, uh, Sir, eh, yan ho eh, tunay na mga bayaning Pilipino. Maraming salamat po. Thank you also, Mr. Thank Chair. you, uh, Senator Padilla. Well, uh, due to lack of uh, material time and we are still going to hold session at uh, 3 o'clock, may we request the other resource persons, especially those uh, resource persons involved in the last uh, a topic to be discussed in free legal assistance to any officer or listed personnel of the AFP and PNP, filed by Senator Bongo, myself, and Senator De La Rosa. Can you please just submit your position paper with regard to these three bills that I mentioned, and we will just create a technical working group so as to expedite the proceedings. And uh, Sila General Roldan, Colonel Chubal and General Rillera. Meron ba ho kayo mga inputs with regard to the the uh, the bills that we just we just just discussed? Good afternoon, sir. General Roldan, sir. The assistant J1, sir. 
The Sir Day of welcomes the intent of the proposed legislative measures which seeks to ensure that our military personnel and police officers are not denied access to any legal assistance which they may require as a consequence of their faithful performance of their duties and ensure that the members of the AFP and the Philippine National Police are adequately served and protected in their time of need. We have additional uh, comments regarding this bill, but in the interest of time, uh, Your Honor, yeah. I will just... Can you just uh, please uh, uh, submit your comments uh, before this committee? Are you up for confirmation tomorrow? Yes, sir. I'm one of the 50, sir. You for confirmation tomorrow. From? Brigadier General. Ano ba mas matas? Brigadier General. You are? From Colonel to Brigadier General. A Colonel to Brigadier General. So you, you will be confirmed as uh, Brigadier General. That is correct, Mr. Uh, Chair. Pero may one star ka na. It is because of ad 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 Estrella na ba yan? Yes, sir. Pero hindi ka pa confirmed na kaya. Pwede ba yan? Sir, there are two modes, sir, because it's ad interim appointment, sir. Hmm. Uh, we Pag hindi ka na-confirm, tatanggalin mo, Australia mo, ganun ba? Uh, but hopefully, sir, that will not happen, ah. Your Honor. <laughs> Believe ba? <laughs> okay, any any other uh, uh, inputs? So, I'm sorry, uh, due to lack of uh, time, and we're, uh, as I mentioned earlier, As uh, I mentioned earlier, we're still going to have a three o'clock uh, session. Uh, uh, the, meet, uh, the hearing of uh, the second hearing of the commission committee of national defense is hereby adjourned. Thank you very much to all those uh, present virtually. We the committee appreciates it. Thank you very much.